first morning, blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh from the world. Good morning, my name is John Pentland, minister at Hillhurst United Church. Welcome to uh, Sunday morning, welcome to my backyard. I have uh, Charlotte Pentland, who's in grade five, as the producer this morning, taking over from Ann Yates LaBerge. Why? Because last Sunday afternoon, we found out that somebody in Charlotte's class had COVID. And so we've been quarantining since then. Remember last Sunday, snow, gray, cold, wet, dark, ugh, in April? Yep, that's exactly how we felt when we realized we'd be being quarantining the four of us, Charlotte, Allie, Anna, and I in our house for a week or 10 days, or who knows how long. Anyway, we we were grumpy about it. And then we thought, well, you know what? It's our turn. Maybe we're just going to have to do our bit here. So we are, uh, we got happy. Uh, Charlotte made a list. Um, there's many things here. Just quickly, you can see it. Watch movies, read books, puzzles, build a fort, backyard, paddle, punch needle, clay stuff, spray paint. Uh, do workout, bake cookies. I like that. That's been done. Uh, plant stuff, clean the garage. I didn't know you were going to do that. Nice. Yeah. Clean the garage, set up and play ping pong and go to C's bath. Go, go through C's bathroom, whatever that means. So anyway, it's been that kind of week. Uh, we've been uh, doing Zoom meetings from here. Work's carried on. Boy, I don't like working from home. Um, anyway, here we are. And today's theme for this day is uh, trust. And we're going to be looking at the 23rd Psalm, one of my favorite pieces known in most of my life. Uh, it's about trust. And we're aware right now that uh, trust is being shaken. Uh, our trust in institutions and politicians and officials, even in our workplaces, our homes, sometimes even mistrusting ourselves. So how does trust work in our faith journey? So we welcome you to Hillhurst United Church this morning. We have four core practices, hospitality. We hope you have the right beverage or food for your nourishment during this service. Uh, we wish we could share that with you in the sanctuary, but we can't. Uh, spirituality is the second practice. How do we nurture our souls? We may not be religious, but we're all spiritual beings. And there's something every day of the week at the church online to nurture your soul, whether it's a class or a session or a book club or a meditation. Uh, so check the website. Uh, social justice. We've been living this week with uh, the social justice of Earth Day uh, on Wednesday and then the news of uh, the um, of George Floyd and the verdict in that case, and what that means for Black Lives Matter and for everyone as we um, we give thanks in some ways that there's been a relief and some peace come out of this horrific event and all of us can breathe a little bit more deeply and um, joyfully in some sense. And lastly, the practice of risk. Uh, it's a risk being in my backyard. It's a risk for Charlotte in grade five to produce this, but here we are taking rest at Hillhurst United Church. So welcome to worship this morning. And how you doing? Hey, John, where are you? Uh, I'm at home. Got bad news. Uh, somebody in Charlotte's class got COVID. We have to quarantine. So uh, here we are. I, you know, we found out that snowy day when it was depressing and snowy and yucky. And that's exactly how we felt. And then we kind of thought, ah, well, hey, we can do things. So I immediately got up some paint I've been wanting to do and started painting. Uh, then, of course, what are you going to do? But we ordered in food. Uh, we did some puzzles. Uh, I had to walk the dog. Uh, I got back to my Obama book, which immediately left me having a nap. So, uh, yeah, well, John, we, we got to we w did you write a sermon?
Uh, <laughs> All right. It's been very quiet here without you. Very. Oh, you, you miss very me. Quiet. You miss me. I do miss you. I do miss you. It's really weird me. doing it this way, but you know, we, we are determined we're going to do this. So anyway. Uh, well, how are we going to do that? Well, we, well, we're going to just keep going. We're going to, you know uh, I've got a plan after, I've got a plan after, but let's talk about a couple of announcements really quick. We can just okay. use this as announcements. You want to be used to okay. some announcements? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. go. All right. So you got to talk about second minister. Okay. Second minister. Well, friends, uh, a year ago, we talked about getting uh, funded uh, and ready to go with a, an associate minister. So we've got a position you can see uh, that fits our church. We've got a search committee that's just met this week for the first time. Uh, we're asking you to let us know of candidates that might be good to come work at Hillhurst United Church. And uh, we'll be on this work in the next uh, six to eight weeks and report back to you uh, how that's going. Hiring a minister and COVID is going to be interesting, huh? Every, everything's interesting right now, and yeah. even hiring a minister. So it'll be different, but you know what? We're adapting. That's a yeah. key thing about our church. So pe people who are adaptive and creative and innovative, uh, that's who we're looking for. And funny. They have to be funny. They have to work with you, so that's a definitely a requirement. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my, my thing this week I wanted to say was a big thank you. It's volunteer week around the world, and we have an incredible amount of volunteers that we need to thank. I was going to start thanking them all, but then you know what happens? We're going to forget half of them, and we can't do that. So we just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for all the volunteers that work with us in, in a very real way all the time to keep us sane um, and help with the church so much. It's so lovely. And yeah. um the church called the the culture calls it uh, volunteers. We know that they're volunteering, but we actually know it's way more than that. It's serving, serving Serve, the church. They serve the church in all kinds of ways, from helping on committees, showing up to clean this or move that, or speak or sing or you name it. The church would not be our church without the amazing volunteers, for sure. Yeah, so neat. So yeah. what we do have to do. So I think those are the announcements that Sarah told us we had to do. Uh, bigger picture, we're gonna think about Sunday. Yeah, well, uh, we gotta record. So I know that you have technical abilities, inabilities, basically. But do you have I'm anybody? Really can you maybe we talk? Uh, let me. Can you grab Charlotte? Well, I, hold, hold on. I was thinking we could. I got an overhead projector. We could put some slides no, up. Just Charlotte. Just see if Charlotte's around. I gotta talk. Well, to I'll her. tell you what. You know, having watched you do this for some time, just about any ten-year-old could do this. Let's see. You think Charlotte, so? Charlotte, come on. Yeah. Charlotte, here's Ann. She's right there on this. Charlotte, to come closer. I gotta, you gotta really listen. Don't be afraid. This is a big skill. This is a big thing. I, it's I, your opportunity to make it to the next, to the next phase of your life. I need you to produce this week. I need you to film your dad. I need you to make sure that he looks at the camera. He doesn't have stuff on his face. His shirt is all straightened out. He sounds good. And if he talks too long, you have to say cut. Okay, can you do that for me? Okay, I'm Charlie. depending on you, okay? And afterwards, I'll just give you chocolate because right. that's what I do for your dad when he does really good sermons. She okay? Hey, uh, the other thing I did this week is I learned how to hold a pen in my beard. John, we decided you weren't going to do that on camera. Thank you, Charlotte. See, Charlotte, you're doing a good job already. You understand. <laughs> we can't let him look bad on camera, it even though it's a really hard thing with this whole beard. Okay, you've got it. Okay. So you've got it, Charlotte. Are you going to be able to do it? Give her okay. a thumbs up. We'll, we got it, and this is easy. I'll, All right, we'll see. <laughs> I can help. I'll help. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Charlie, you have to say happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Hillhurst United Church commits to being an inclusive community of faith, leaning into the conversation of what it means to be anti-racist and intercultural community. We are seeking to live out our core values of social justice, spirituality, radical hospitality, and risk-taking. And we seek to follow the way of Jesus under the banner, whoever you are, wherever you're at, join us on the journey. We're a community that values the sacred worth of all, inclusive of every age, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, ability, mental and physical health status, neurodiversity, economic circumstance, nationality, cultural, ethnic, or religious background. We honor the wisdom of each person's differing life experience.
and we celebrate the diversity of God's kingdom in welcoming the full participation of all persons in all aspects of what we do. We're so glad you found us, and we can't wait to celebrate with you this Sunday morning as part of our worship services. As the Affirmative Coordinator, I want to tell you about an exceptional and exciting evening tonight. We have a monthly group called Something Completely Different that is for all LGBTQ2SIA plus identified individuals. It's an interfaith gathering where we share space to connect, to learn, and to grow together. This evening at 7 p.m. online, we are joined by special guest counselor Kelsey Hoff, who's going to lead us through a process of understanding spiritual deconstruction. Spiritual deconstruction is the process of having to unpack your faith and your background when confronted with some new information like your, your gender identity or sexual orientation. And tonight we're going to be exploring that, how to um, support ourselves on the journey, but also how to navigate when our process of spiritual deconstruction may not align with those in our family of origin or our faith communities. So join us tonight and we will have a great conversation. Uh, for more information, go to hillhurstunited.com. Happy Sunday. Today we acknowledge that Hillhurst United Church is located on Treaty 7 land. This land is home to the Blackfoot Confederacy of the Siksika, Gaina, and Pakani people, as well as the Satina and Stony Nakoda Nations. Calgary is also home to Métis Region 3. May we continue to live with respect for all our relations, honoring the traditional spirituality of our Indigenous neighbors, remembering that we are all treaty people. I've been watching this week, I watched starting Sunday, some crows building a nest, and I'll inject some pictures into this watching the tenacity and the persistence of them finding little twigs and flying up to the top of this tree. They've been building it ever since, through the snow, through the heat, through the rain, and they're not quite done. Today I saw the two of them, I'm gonna assume that they were male and female, but not sure, uh, fly up to the nest with their twigs and then they flew off together. While they were flying, they were tumbling and tossing and I thought they were fighting and then I thought, no, it's spring. They could be doing something else. And then they flew off in different directions and they've returned this evening with twigs to make their nest. You know, when we spend time looking at uh, birds making nests or uh, buds coming on trees or tulips coming out of the ground, we're sure grateful for the earth and all the beauty of it. And that's the gift. So I hope that you on Earth Day this week give thanks for the God's creation and the gift of God's body called the earth and all the two-legged and four-legged creatures that wander around this place. Here we are.
we are in my living room and Charlotte's going to zip you around. One of the great things we've noticed about being on Zoom is you get to be in people's homes, see parts of what's going on in the world. A cat jumps up or a dog barks uh, and that's all part of it. And so at this point, we come to the prayers in our service. We recognize some people have had a great week. They've been outside playing a first golf game or uh, the witnessing of the building of a nest or the songbirds waking them in the morning. Uh, some have been raking their lawns and feeling like the earth is waking up and we get thanks during Earth Week. Uh, and some have had a challenging week. We know some have family and members in uh, the hospital. Uh, we know some have had family members or friends die. Uh, and some are struggling that every day is hard with the loneliness and the um, challenge of uh, being isolated. So we're in very different places. Some are feeling the highs of life and other the lows, and yet we center ourselves in prayer. I invite you to share these words and then in silence offer your own prayers. Let us pray. Spirit, breath of life, we release our fears. We welcome our doubts. We deepen our trust. Be with us as we open our hearts and minds in silence. We gather our prayers in song as we sing the Lord's Prayer. One of the great gifts of the Bible is the diversity of story, uh, the different uh, parables, history, songs, like the 23rd Psalm we're doing today, um, invitations uh, over time for people who offer their perspective on who God is. And the Bible is rich in diversity and rich in belief, but we're called to trust and to deeply trust the creator that lives beyond us and yet within us. And the Creator knows that we will have high moments in life and we will descend into the valleys and it will be dark. But God will be present in the highs and in the lows. And God will journey and walk with us as we journey home. So trust this, we are loved, forgiven, and set free. Thanks be to God for this great good news that we can trust. Amen.
Okay, so uh, now it's morning. Yesterday was crazy. Uh, last Sunday it was uh, snowing. Yesterday I was outside on my phone and an alarm came off saying it was too hot. I had to go inside and today it's snowing. That's Calgary. Lots of change and we're living in change right now. Uh, I have my producer and photographer and videographer Charlotte behind me on her break from online schooling and I give thanks for her great leadership here. Ann Yates is worried about losing her job, but you know, we got to let things go to the younger generation. Uh, you know, uh, what I have as a, a friend in uh, Winnipeg, Michael Wilson, and we call, talk to each other every week after Sunday. We talk about what happened, what worked, what didn't. And we're chatting about what we're doing during the pandemic. Um, and I was saying to him, you know, Michael, one of the things I'm finding right now during this pandemic, right now, a year later, is a huge mistrust. It feels like people don't trust the politicians. Uh, they're not trusting the medical authorities. They're not trusting uh, mainstream media. They're not trusting social media. They're not trusting their family members. Mistrust is huge right now. People aren't even trusting their neighbors. I saw this really funny uh, text on an app for our neighborhood that lets you know what's going on in the neighborhood. And somebody texted in, warning, yesterday I saw a black truck going by the houses on our street very slowly, obviously looking for their next break-in. And I thought to myself, that's weird. And sure enough, somebody replied, whatever happened to cars going slowly down the street looking for an address? Isn't that amazing? Somebody looking for an address is suddenly a criminal. The mistrust is huge right now. And I think trust is essential to our understanding of faith and our understanding of our relationship one to another as a community uh, and one to another with God, our creator. Trust is the essential piece of a faithful journey. How are you doing there, Charlotte? I'm done. Okay, so we're continuing our uh, reflection. My producer has abandoned me a little too cold out. And I was thinking, you know, here's the thing. If it's cold out, you'll get a shorter sermon, so you should be glad. Uh, I was saying it the other night that uh, what we're living with right now, Michael and I were sharing, was this deep level of mistrust right now in our culture. There's mistrust of, of governments, of politicians, of medical authorities. There's a mistrust of the media and social media. There's mistrust of neighbors, as I was just referring to a moment ago. Uh, and there's this real sense of mistrusting even ourselves, self-doubt. And trust is essential in communal life to live as human beings. There has to be a strong sense of trust to move forward. And we're discovering that in this pandemic, that as trust gets eroded, it gets harder to move effectively as a whole uh, common human family. And when I think about this as it relates to our theology, I was thinking about Harvey Koch's book, The Future of Faith. He talks about how we've interchanged the word belief and faith as though they're the same, and they're not. He said, belief is about opinion. It's about uh, an idea. It's about a mental assent to something. It doesn't require the same that, that faith requires. Faith requires a deep-seated trust in unknowing and uncertainty, and yet a trust that, we, uh, that, that what we are saying is true. And I think that there's a difference between belief and uh, faith. Uh, we can believe in uh, many things that may or may not happen, but we trust that even uh, as we move through in a faithful way, even if things don't go our way or things fall apart, there's a certain sense of surrender and knowing and trusting that all shall be well. And we're called to faithfulness, not to belief. What that means, I think, is that we know that people will fail us, that institutions will fail us or disappoint us or break apart. And we know that will happen. We're not saying that it won't happen, but we trust that all shall be well as we move through that. Theologians will look at the world and our, our understanding of things as, as being order, disorder, reorder. Or Richard Rohr will talk about first half of life, transition, second half of life. Theologically, we'll talk about it as life, death, resurrection. Marcus Borg will invite us to look at the scripture with a pre-critical naivete, a critical aspect, and then a post-critical naivete, holding together the truth that is essential. And I think uh, recent theologians like Brian McLaren will talk about this sense of uh, belief and doubt and then faith. 
in his book that just came out recently, uh, I've been looking at why your belief stopped working and what you can do about it. He talks about the fact that um, unfortunately people have said doubt's a bad thing, but in fact doubt is an encourager to better understanding, to better way of learning, uh, to a deeper faith and trust. He writes, Unfortunately, the notion of faith that has emerged in the West has, much, has a much more rational assent to truth of certain mental beliefs rather than a calm and hopeful trust that God is inherent in all things and that this whole thing is going somewhere good. It's like our theologian Richard Rohr who talks about saying everything belongs, the good and the bad, non-dual thinking, clean and unclean, um, right and wrong, black and white. It's the totality of non-dual thinking that we're moving forward. And when we don't have that holding together of both and, we get polarized, which is what we're seeing right now in our culture of the polarized uh, people at either ends holding their opinions and not working together for the common understanding somewhere in between. In our book study this week, uh, we're looking at a fabulous book called See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love. Valerie Kaur, who is a Sikh, is uh, inviting us to see that revolutionary love is important, love of self, love of our enemies, and love of the creator. And the book begins by talking about the importance of wonder. Uh, I call wonder curiosity. It's so important to be curious in our life and our faith. She writes, wonder is where love begins. But the failure to wonder is the beginning of violence. Isn't that so? When we don't wonder anymore, we react and we become violent. Once people stop wondering about others, once they no longer see others as part of them, they disable their instinct of empathy. And once they lose empathy, they can do anything to others or allow anything to be done to them. And so in her book, she invites us to consider wonder as a way of, of understanding those who are different to us that we assume and find the common ground to know that others are the same as us, different but the same grounded in love. What we're discovering these days, my friends, is this polarization is pulling us apart. It is not inviting us to be in the middle ground to understand both ends. We see this clearly this past week in the verdict of Derek Chauvin and the George Floyd case. There were some who, uh, I, I feel a sense of relief that justice was done, but I also lament, I hold relief and lament that, that there was relief that this obvious uh, error was called into justice. And also I lament that this person grew up in a way that he thought this was okay, that this was right. One of the writers I read this week talked about the sadness of this case is that we're saying that um, this is novel, this is unique, when in fact we should be seeking a culture where this kind of behavior is not allowed, that this kind of behavior is called into question, and this kind of racism that is systemic in our world is challenged and changed and transformed. And so there's relief that justice was done, but we lament with sadness that this is actually the case where we have become as human beings. And there's a challenge to that. And so uh, when we look at cases like that, we realize that it's not either or, it is somewhere in the middle. And we look at most of our social justice issues, there's, there's, there's right and wrong, and somewhere in the middle is where we have to land as human beings, where we're not polarized and plugging our ears, but actually listening to the story uh, that somewhere in the middle, there is truth. You know, when I think about this, I think about the text that we have today, the 23rd Psalm. I, I remember as a kid being at my grandparents' funeral and the minister asking people to rise up and say the 23rd Psalm. And I remember being in awe as a little person watching them say these words. The 23rd Psalm is perhaps one of the most favorite texts in our whole Bible. People in the church and outside of the church know the Lord is my shepherd. It is a psalm that is uh, beautiful often at weddings and at funerals. And it's a, it's a psalm that holds the both and together. Let me say how. Uh, Walter Brueggemann is a theologian and he, is, uh, he says that the psalms are broken apart in three kinds of ways, that they begin with some kind of orientation. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall want, not want. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. It's an orientation of beauty and wonder. And then suddenly things fall apart. Disorientation. There's a, a table set with mine enemies. Now I'm suddenly in the valley of the shadow of death. And there's this disorientation. And that is our life experience as well. And then finally it ends uh, with... Um, a call to say, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this reorientation. So uh, orientation, disorientation, reorientation. This pattern, this life and death and resurrection is our story. And there's calm in knowing that that life of faith doesn't mean bad things are going to happen. Life of faith doesn't say everything will be Pollyanna and beautiful all the time, but it recognizes there is both wonder and disturbance and ultimately a trust and a faith that all shall be well. Now in our own church family, just last night, um, Chris and Nico and our church family sit in the back row all the time. Uh, Chris died yesterday of COVID. And this uh, breaks our heart. Um, This is a deep sadness. And I know many others are experiencing this in their families. And I emailed her last night, the words of the 23rd Psalm and reminded her of of the blessing of life together and the sadness of the valley of the shadow of death, and yet ultimately the trust that God is with them and and that Chris is uh, safe in the arms of God, the shepherd of all. I joked in my text, I said, I can just see uh, Chris and Smokey from our community sharing a good conversation on the other side and the mystery of life beyond death. You see, life is filled with uh, both joy and beauty and pastoral moments and also very sad and difficult uh, darkness and sadness. But ultimately, faith is about a deep-seated trust that all shall be well. A deep-seated trust that we will be held and are held by God as we journey. We're living in really difficult times where trust is being stretched and pulled in many different directions. And I hope that we find the middle ground where we hold together the light and the dark, the good and the bad, the good and the evil, the clean and the unclean. And somewhere in the middle, we trust that God is present in all of it. These are really challenging days, really challenging days for everyone globally in this pandemic. And what is needed most is a trust that that God will walk with us through this. The shepherd is a good shepherd and that God will lead us to a brighter new day as we move from orientation to disorientation to reorientation and we move through this pandemic together. So that's uh, what I wanted to share this day in my backyard with the sun and the snow together in one place and trust that you are okay where you are, that you're loved and held and forgiven and set free. And may you and I have a deeper trust in God who will neither fail us or abandon us, for God is indeed with us. Thanks be to God for this great good news on this cold afternoon. May it warm your heart and mine. Amen.
Well, here we are. The sun is out and it's snowing. That's Calgary. We give thanks for your presence with us today. I invite you to stay after for the chat uh, where you're at. A short conversation with others, uh, talk about the service and how things are going on in your life. So we give also thanks for the 23rd Psalm, one of my favorite, known it my entire life. A reminder that in life and in death, God is with us in the highs and the lows. And we are called to trust in that so that peace may come for all of our living. So go, knowing that we're loved, forgiven, and set free. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. Amen. Okay, so uh, here's your producer today, Charlotte Pentland. Um, Charlotte, thanks for doing your work. How'd you like doing it? Good. How's it better than being in school? Yeah. yeah. Do you want Anne's job? Mm, no. No? Hmm. How about, was my sermon too long? Um. Yeah, that's the, is that the worst part, doing the sermon? It's even worse than being outside? Oh, sorry, service is over. Too late. Bye.
morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden. Sprung in completeness where God's feet pass. Ours is the sunlight, ours is the morning, born of the one light, Eden saw play. Praise with elation, praise every morning. God recreation of the new day. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing. Fresh from the world.